Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can spend $30 as a one-time payment to cancel your cable forever and turn any TV into a smart TV using the newest Amazon Fire TV stick. So this is gonna be an in-depth review of this stick and essentially how you can plug it into the back of any TV, the apps you can get on it, how well it works with different TVs, as well as what is different about the newest remote, which supposedly can control any TV as well as the Fire Stick. So there's a lot to talk about in this video. Video. Let's jump right into it. So I've seen a lot of other videos out there about the Fire Stick and some of them were just plain unboxings, they didn't talk about them, some of them were older versions, some of them talked about apps that you can't get on here anymore, and so I wanted to make an updated one for 2019 or 2020, the newest model of the Amazon Fire TV Stick, to really show you guys you know, whether or not you want to buy this, is this something that actually is worth it for you to spend $40 or $30 on this and buy it for your TV, or is it, you know, maybe it's not for everybody, maybe you want to stick with your cable and your antenna and your satellite satellite or whatever you might be using. So there's really a lot to talk about here. First, I want to say if you're not familiar with Amazon Fire TV sticks, you don't actually need an Amazon Prime account, so it's not going to be any monthly charge to you to use this. It's just going to be, you know, whatever you pay up front, so $30 to buy this, and then you'll set up an Amazon account, which won't cost you any money, and you don't have to sign up for Prime, and it'll still work just fine. You just won't get all the Amazon Prime channels. You can still get free TV and lots of other apps on here. I'll talk about those later on in this video. So if you're looking at this and you're going to say, all right, Mike, I get it. It's little black rectangle plugs into the back of my TV, but maybe it doesn't fit on my TV. So what if you have a TV that, you know, you plug this up underneath and the TV curves out and then the stick is so long it doesn't fit? Well, lucky for you, it's 2019 right now, and that is the year of the dongle. So this is by no exception, you have a dongle coming in the box, you can plug this in and you know complete your whole home dongle system and just plug it into the back of your TV in any orientation. So really convenient right there. And then if we can get a close up right here, you'll see the only other thing on this little box, this little fire stick, is actually the power port right there. So looking at this Amazon Fire TV stick up close, this is the newest generation. It's 3.4 inches long, 1.2 inches wide, and a half inch thick, so relatively small. And as I said, you can use the dongle if it doesn't fit on the back of your TV. You have the HDMI output right there, and then you also have your micro USB power supply on the side. So this can show up to 1080p for 60 frames per second. It weighs 1.1 ounces, so as I said, relatively small. The processor on the inside is quad-core ARM 1.3 gigahertz. So it's going to be decently quick, much quicker than some of the older models you might have seen. This also has 8 gigabytes of internal storage. That's primarily going to be for apps or photos. You're not going to be really be able to download any videos on this and watch like if your power or your internet goes out or anything of that sort. So you really won't be banking on this for entertainment if you lose internet for some reason. Now, this also has Bluetooth 4.1 plus Le Pair or Le Pair. I'm not exactly sure how you say that, but essentially what you can do is you can connect peripheral devices besides just the remote and use them for, you know, so gaming, for example, or you can use uh, maybe headphones. You can have wireless headphones with this, and I'll talk about that in a second. So dual band, dual antenna Wi-Fi, and it's an IR device control. So on the remote right here, you'll see there is IR here, so you can control your TV, and it should be almost any TV out there, all you have to do is input the model or the make of your TV and it'll automatically program so you can turn it on or you can turn the volume up or down or of course you can mute it. You also have the regular buttons in the middle here which are going to be controlling essentially your fire stick. So you have your up, down, left, right which is this little ring right here which honestly is pretty similar to like the old iPods. The only thing I really wish they had like the little ring where you could do your album flow, you can spin around like that so you can't do that on here unfortunately. You have a middle button there, that's your OK button. You have, you know, your back, home, menu, uh, rewind, play, fast forward, the same normal six buttons there. And then you also have on the top a little microphone button, and above that is the microphone. So why is there a microphone right there? So Amazon can sit in a basement with hundreds of people listening to your conversations. Just kidding, sort of. Really what it is is so that you can use Amazon Alexa on your TV. So a really powerful way to make your TV 
a smart TV and even a smart home to some extent where you can control like a Philips Hue light bulb or maybe some Lutron lights or whatever you might be using. If you have an Echo somewhere around your house, you can control it all with this. You could order pizza, order an Uber. You could look up the weather. There's, you know, endless things you can do with Amazon's Alexa. And of course, this is an Alexa enabled device. Now, what's cool about this new remote? Well, so when they first came out with the Amazon Fire TV, and honestly, for that matter, the Roku and so many other devices, it, it became annoying that you had your other TV remote that all it would do was turn your TV on and off and then adjust the volume. You had these, you know, the number pad that didn't do anything. You can't control the channels with that remote anymore. And so all of a sudden you had two remotes just to turn your TV on and then to select what you wanted to watch. So Amazon came up with the nifty idea of turning your TV on and off with this. It's really simple. It doesn't actually change the size of this really at all. It's still essentially just a simple little remote, much smaller than most other remotes for that matter. Uh, and it's really a very convenient feature to have. Okay, so guys, to be clear, the biggest difference between this and the old Fire Sticks that you might have seen, and I'm talking even as old as just last year, is really the difference in the remote. So as you can see, the buttons right there, the mute, the volume down, volume up, and the power button in the top corner should be able to control any TV that is on their list. And they have hundreds of TVs on there. So here I have a Magnavox, a pretty old TV actually, I think it's about 10 years old. So we're gonna see if it works on this one. So first we're just gonna hit volume up and volume down, and you'll see right there, it is actually changing the volume. When we hit the mute button, uh, it's looking like that's not actually muting the TV. All right, now let's try the off and on button. All right, so the off button is working. Yeah, off and on is working, and it looks like, basically this is working very well, although the other day I did notice that when I unplugged the Fire Stick, after a few minutes, eventually this stopped controlling my TV, and I guess it drifted away and was no longer paired. And when you first turn on your Fire TV stick the very first time, it'll ask you to select a language, and then it's gonna walk you through a basic configuration. Uh, I'm gonna fast forward through that right now to show you guys just, you know, it's really pretty simple to set this thing up. It's then gonna ask you to sign into your Amazon account, Okay, now while this is happening, I wanna show you guys the app really quickly. Now the app's not that exciting, it acts just like the remote. So it's not gonna be like the Chromecast, you're not really casting very easily, but it still can be a little easier to type and make things go a little quicker. Okay, and then it's gonna bring you to this page right here and ask you what kind of TV you have. There are hundreds of different TV brands. So you just go down and find whatever TV brand you have, select it, and then it's gonna tell you to go up and down on the volume. Uh, so let's just say, whatever, land on that one. This is not actually a TV I'm using, but we're just gonna show you right now. So it'll tell you, yes, it's gonna be a volume playing, and is it working, and then you're set up. Now, it plays a little video right here to tell you about how to use the remote. I'm just gonna skip that because I already know how to do this. So it tells you at the bottom, you just skip right through all this stuff. Now here's where it recommends you get Amazon Prime. You don't need it to use this if you wanna get Prime and you don't already have it. I have a link down in the description of this video, so go check that out to get 30 days for a free trial. Uh, we're just gonna say no thanks. Actually, if you're a student, you can get up to six months with the link down in the description as well. So choose your streaming services. You can choose different ones. So let's just say you have you know whatever apps down here, uh, select which ones you want. So looking at the actual interface of this, you'll see it's not all that different from like a Kindle or something else where they have their home screen with all the different apps that you have and they sort of try to organize it so you have like the ones that you most recently use, they have a sponsorship right there. They do plug a lot of their Prime stuff so they're gonna say if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch these Prime series. Then they have other things that you might wanna get, different things from your, you know, your cable subscription if you can sign in through cable. Like if for some reason you have a cable subscription and you still want to use a Fire Stick, you can use these, you can go down and find things to rent or buy. There's a lot of different options down here. And once you add other apps that like the free one, so if you add Tubi or if you add Pluto TV, they're gonna show up with like what's on right now and you can easily watch different channels that are on for free. So let's go and get an app right now. I'll show you guys how to do that. It's really simple. All you wanna do is go up and go over to search and you can search for it right here. Once you select it, it says you own it. Of course, that just means that it's totally free to download. And then it's gonna download. And once you get it, you can actually start using other things. You can navigate the uh, regular interface here while it's downloading in the background. And then it'll just pop up whenever it's ready. So this is a little bit of a noisy interface in my opinion. It could be a little cleaner, a little easier to use, but they do try to organize everything right here. One thing they don't do quite as well as a Roku is when you search for different movies, they sort of plug their own stuff first and they don't do the really nice Roku thing where they sort them by price. 
So you have your videos, movies, TV shows, apps, and settings. Settings, of course, is going to be where you're going to be able to connect like a Bluetooth device if you want to listen to, you know, whatever you're watching on TV with your earbuds. One complaint, as I said earlier, is that I wasn't really able to control the volume very easily for my earbuds using this device, but you can go through and select your sounds and applications. You can adjust your controller in any way you want. Uh, and of course, you also have uh, the peripheral devices if you have headphones or anything of that sort. Uh, so there's a lot of settings in here. I recommend you go and check them out once you get your Fire Stick if you choose to get one. But otherwise, uh, I'm not going to cover a whole lot more of this stuff. So back across the top, we're just going back to the home page there and going down. Let's see if they installed our app yet. So right there, Pluto TV is one of the first free TV apps you can get. There's also, you can use Kodi and get some other channels through there. Like you saw, saw before, Tubi was another one. So Pluto TV, they have a lot of different uh, just channels that are totally free here, similar to Antenna TV. So they're not gonna be like the best channels, but they'll have like the Food Network and a couple other channels of that sort. And I can actually cover this in another video if you guys want. Go down and comment and let me know if you are interested in this. Another thing I should mention is that the apps for this sync across different devices. So if you sign in on here, or if you sign into your internet on here, and then you get a Kindle later, it can typically sign into your internet automatically and use a lot of the same apps, use a lot of the same accounts, and they make it really seamless if you have a lot of different Amazon devices. So now let's talk a little bit more about Alexa. Now all you have to do with the remote is press and hold the microphone button, and then you can talk and say whatever you want. So let's say, example, we're wondering what the weather's like. Alexa, what's the weather like in Miami today? And another thing to note, guys, is that you can see in the background all the apps that I chose in the beginning are downloading right now, and they're popping up. That's why those little pop-ups keep happening in the corner. But right there, you see we have the weather, so it works. You can do a lot of other stuff. You can ask you questions. It'll Google things uh, or search it. I don't know if it uses Google, actually, but you can do a lot of other features. Well, you can access a lot of things with the Alexa right here. Let's try and open Pluto TV. Alexa, open Pluto TV. So it'll easily open a lot of different apps that you have, although sometimes navigating within the apps isn't always the most convenient. Using this Fire TV stick, sometimes it's easier to actually navigate through the apps using the remote. Uh, but if it's like an Amazon app, you're using Amazon Prime Video, you can easily ask it to pull up any show or movie or even you know a particular episode if you're interested in that. Okay, so from the home screen, let's go up and go check out the apps. If you go to the apps tab across the top and you go down, they'll suggest like a ton of different apps that you might be interested in getting. Mostly are free to download and let's just go down they have you know just to show you some of the great ones that they have so they have you know plenty of different movies and tv show apps they have sports apps they've got you know any kind of like network that has their own app you can get those weather games you know lots of different stuff and then so games right here let's get crossy road and see how that works so you're not going to be playing any big games on this but if you're interested in playing like snake or pong or whatever or crossy road for this example uh, it's definitely something that could work if you want to do that on your tv i'm not really sure how many people want to do that? Let me know in the comments down below if this is something you're interested in doing. All right, so it looks like Crossy Road is now downloaded. Let's go down and open that. Another thing to note, guys, I forgot to mention this before, but you can actually use this on an old TV, like I said, if you get a little adapter, I'll link that in the description, or you can use it on a new TV, even a smart TV, and just make the TV smarter or Alexa enabled or whatever you're looking for. And another thing I really like to do is actually plug this into a projector, and suddenly you don't need a laptop sitting next to it whenever you wanna play movies or TV on your, on your projector. So what's my overall opinion of the Fire Stick? Honestly, for just $30, it is a really nice device. It's great that you can control your TV and the Fire Stick with the same remote. So that's a huge step up from the previous models we might have seen. I wish there was a casting option, a little more, you know, just so it's easier to cast from your phone or your laptop. Uh, some, something I like about the Chromecast a little better than this. But overall, this is a great home theater system that you can plug into any TV or projector and instantly turn it into a smart TV. So that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you want to see a little bit more about a Roku or a Chromecast, check out the cards right up there. I'll tag another video that I reviewed and compared those two. If you enjoyed this video, which I hope you did, please remember to go down and like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.